Hello everyone, today we're taking a look at Newbie Drone Savage B. This comes as a kit, you do have to assemble. I could have swore I saw on their site somewhere where you could add assembly. I could be wrong on that. Features 1202 and 11,420 kV motors on 3 inch Jim Fan low pitch props. The B Brain Brushless version 2 all in one flight controller features an F411 flight controller, durr, a 12 amp ESC, and a VTX as well as the receiver with, as you can see, these little tiny. Diversity antennas. Features the well-known and well-used Goober canopy and the BI CMOS camera. Features rolled or folded pin PH2 Zero connector. A 3D print for your battery mounting. You get the same print, doesn't matter if you order a 2S version or a 1S version. Mine's the 1S version. As you can see, the controller still has the connectors on it. There's our USB port. You could also use a rubber band if you wanted to toilet tank your battery. Everybody loves that I say toilet tank. I don't know where I got that. Motor post to motor post, I'm getting 115 millimeters. Carbon fiber base plate is two and a half millimeters thick. It weighs just under 40 and a grams with a newbie drone gold 300 milliamp 1s battery it weighs just about 48 and a half grams my preference is to fly it on the 450 milliamp gnb battery which brings the weight to 53 and a quarter grams the flight controller comes pre-installed with jesc so it sounds a little different than most quads and of course the other one also has led lights unfortunately this is a very dreary day and you might be wondering where's this been this has been out for a few weeks well i tend to go slow. You know, I don't make a review a day. I don't go out with the intent of making a review every day or even flying for review purposes every day. And you know, it's not, I say this all the time. I feel like I'm beating a dead horse, but there's always people that either miss it or they ask me these particular questions in some of the review videos. I, this isn't my job. I have a regular IT job that I work at a financial institution. I enjoy my job. I enjoy my work. I've been doing it for 26 years. And so that's how I pay my bills. This is my hobby. It, started out as a hobby and it continues to be a hobby whatever money the channel generates in any way shape or form i just buy more fpv stuff and uh so it takes me a while longer to do review videos than you might think it should and it's because i mainly fly it more uh one of the things that i get real concerned about is you buying something based upon my recommendation and having a bad experience so it tends to take me at least 10 days of flying something it might not be 10 consecutive days but 10 days in a, a period of time to where I'll, I'll put in anywhere from 5 to 15 packs a day maybe within that 10 days i only fly let's say four that would be pretty short order but it might only be four depending upon the weather and uh, things going on in my life but uh, so I tend to fly things quite a bit so it takes me longer and then I've got to go through all the DVR footage and go which flight does it show how the quad handles the best at least in my space in my hands so that that's my spiel on why things take longer now you notice that I'm flying it on a 450 milliamp I would encourage you to go to the uh, Facebook group if you do Facebook stuff and join the newbie drone hive i'll put a link down in the video description there's a lot of people doing a lot of different tweaks and changes on this sort of thing uh you know it's a hobbyist group of people that are very active within the community uh, mentioned in the quick roll about jesc so that means that you can run either 24 kilohertz on the esc which is what i'm doing here or you can bump that up to 48 kilohertz i don't prefer 48 kilohertz 48 kilohertz is going to get you more flight time and i know that's very very popular but I think the way I fly or the way I want the low end of the throttle or stick movements to feel, 48 kilohertz just, it, it's just, it just, it, I stumble all over myself. It just doesn't suit me. So I tend to stay away from 48 kilohertz. But if you want more flight time, I would suggest that you put that on there. They have uh, their, their hex files posted on a GitHub, which is listed right on the newbie drone uh, Savage B page. So it's easy to get to. Uh, this has also been well tuned. So that's always something that I love about doing a review is I don't have to spend any of my time tuning it. I just go, get to go out and fly it and have fun just like you do. Uh, I do have two of these. I am shipping one of them back. The other one that I built myself worked normally, except for the fact that it just didn't want to stay on the ground when you were armed. It wanted to take off. And I couldn't get the throttle uh, low enough. I took the uh, throttle idle down to about one and it still kept wanting to take off. So they're going to take a look at that. Next up is a flight where I just try to kill a newbie drone gold battery. No flight audio in this one, but we do have a sunny day. So that's nice. Another calm day. So I had to take the Savage B out. Uh, I think this might have been about a week ago. Some of you eagle-eyed people might keep a close eye on the channel. And you might be able to tell my weather patterns and timelines for things. But in this flight, I'm actually just kind of pursuing the whole racing style. And I'm going to see what a 300 milliamp battery, this is a newbie drone gold batteries and how long they'll last. We're only going to get about a minute and a half flight. Uh, I mentioned it in the quick roll, the JESC. 
that means it's already pre-flashed, so that's a licensed file. And then that means you can either run it at 24 kilohertz, which is stock, that's what I'm running right here, right now, and or you can switch it to the 48 kilohertz. 48 kilohertz does give you more flight time. I'm not a huge fan of it because of the low end throttle performance. I feel like it, it just slows the props down slower, and I think that gives you extra flight time but I don't quite get the response I'm looking for. So it's not a negative as to running 48 kilohertz. If you want flight time, put 48 kilohertz on there and you'll be all set to go. Professionally tuned by the Newbie Drone staff. And uh, they post their uh, tune as well as their hex files uh, on their GitHub. And you can go over there and fetch not only the JESC, but the Betaflight hex as well. I have quite a bit of problems bringing it back down. I have to circle a little bit before I can bring it in. And you'll see here that we end up with our ending battery voltage at I think at 3.6 volts per cell. So even though I kind of really shortened the flight time going hard, could have flown a little bit longer if I chose to. And again, that is on a newbie drone gold 300 milliamp battery. So let's do the bend test. And I'll have a good way to do this. Some people tease me because it always bends where my thumbs are. Yes, I understand that point. But how else am I supposed to flex the frame? It's 1S, so the amount of frame flex I'm not too concerned about. You know, it's not the most rigid flame frame ever. But it looks to be good stiff carbon. I think everything is going to be fine with it. They did chamfer all the edges, which always feels nice on the finger. So if you're touching it, I believe I mentioned it in the quick roll. We have these mount points that if you wanted to, you could use a rubber band and you could toilet tank your battery if you wanted to. Or if this TPU pre print seems to not be holding your batteries well or it breaks off for some reason, you could just replace it with a rubber band. There's no need to have a 3D printer. Uh, they have mentioned in that Facebook group that I mentioned, the uh, Newbie Drone Hive Facebook group group excuse me that they're thinking or looking into changing the connector from a folded or rolled pin to a solid pin which is a good recommendation of course we have the uh, beta fpv bt20 which i don't think anyone else is going to be using it'll probably be the death of that connector as well as uh, the gnb27 connector which has also been named the Esheen. Is it EC27 connector anyways it came on that ae65 that anniversary edition whoop um I would like to see something else, but I know a lot of us have investments in PH20 connectors, and if we swap those out, that means either time swapping our battery connections out, or it means we've kind of lost that value in all those batteries we've bought over the years that have the PH20 connector. We used to start out with the PH125, and we found out that was a huge bottleneck. I mentioned it, so I thought I should show it. So on the left, we have a solid pin PH20 connector, and then on the right, we have that GNB27 connector. Looks like a really small XT30 to the, for the most part. This does come in a 2S variety, and really the only difference, to my knowledge, is the motor KV. And I think my preference would be the 2S variety. Uh, 1S is a lot of fun. It's cheap because you have uh, batteries, you know, just laying around from other stuff that you can uh, use in this. But I really think that I needed a bit more flight performance for me. I'd like to have a little bit more punch, a touch bit more weight, and maybe a little bit of camera angle too. I think that's only the only thing about the newbie drone canopies that I could really argue with too much. They are very robust. They always hold the cameras very steady if you mount the camera firmly inside them and they're very robust. I think I've got one B brain canopy over here that I eventually did break on one of my test rigs. Well, it's not really broken anymore because I fixed it. So this had a, a camera in it, a run cam nano two. And I believe after a number of impacts of this top piece, I think I landed on a little bit of that garden trim edging stuff and it broke this off. But you can see I've, I've already put some glue on it and repaired it. So these canopies that they make, they, they just last. They work great. I have bought a number of them for different builds over the years. So I don't think you have much concern there, but you don't get any camera angle. Whatever you have there is what you're stuck with unless you make a modification on your own. Prop screws. Some people like using prop screws all the time. Some people don't. You know, if you have an issue with the props flying off, uh, maybe the prop has been kind of mishandled on its way onto the shaft. And so you might need to use prop screws. Uh, otherwise, I found in all my flights, I did not have any props fly off. Now, that there's a variable to that because I had the baby tooth uh, on its motors. And that was a, a two millimeter motor shaft. And I did find where the prop and one, I think it was two props actually flew off in that one. So maybe I mishandled those props when I put them on the shaft. So it's just something that, you know, if you don't want to use screws to save that little bit of weight or hassle, 
you cannot use the screws, but if you have issues with the props coming off, either kind of be more tender when you're putting the props on the shaft, or just use prop screws. You can see we've got hex-headed screws across the canopy there, as well as on the motor, so you have the same single tool assembly that you can do. Uh, like I said, I did build my first, and I had that issue with uh, the minimum throttle just wouldn't go low enough at one of the skitter. As soon as you armed it, one of the skitter across the floor. And I sent them a video of that, and they sent me a, a return label, and I'll be sending that one back. Uh, shortly after I wrap up this review video, they're probably waiting on that, wondering what I'm doing. I don't have two working ones. Well, I'll just show it to you. This is the one I built. You can see I use my favorite tape on the motor wires. They like to spin their motor wires. And my capacitor I installed outside of the canopy. When they built it, they installed it inside the canopy, which is cleaner. But this one just wants to skitter across the floor. Uh, you could get it in the air, but you had to barely be on the throttle or you were going to end up you know, going to the moon. So something off with the ESC or maybe flashing the ESC, even though I tried various things, trying to, you know, not make a problem of myself. Uh, this one, there's just something off with it. So newbie drone took care of me. And that's the support that I talked about within the flight video that, you know, it's hard to beat newbie drone support. They're very active uh, within their uh, B brain or uh, the hive community. And they you know, they take care of their customers. So that's something. Uh, as far as the price point goes, you might be thinking it has a huge price point. Uh, it's probably been covered by others as well. But the price point on the Savage B for the 1S kit is $119.99. That's, of course, that's U.S. for our international friends. Uh, check out the Newbie Drone website. I'll have a link down in the video description. You can see what their shipping is. I suspect it's going to be cost prohibitive, but that depends on you. You know, what are you used to paying for shipping versus what it's going to cost to, to get one of these shipped to you? They do ship in very small boxes, so that's handy because they are so small. They actually have boxes that they just kind of fit inside of. And they don't sit at an angle or anything. Uh, the 2S version uh, has the 8,420 motors. Those are also $119.99. Not the motors, but the 2S version. And with the 2S version, you just kind of fold these up. And you run your batteries through the holes. You, you have two slots. Even if you have the 1S version, you get the same battery mount. So either way, you just fold it up and run it through there. Although I did find with the 450 that I would just kind of shove it all the way underneath. Like so. Of course, I would put the battery wire over here so I could connect it up. That is the Newbie Drone Savage B. If you have any comments, questions, suggestions, or otherwise, please let me know in the section down below. I appreciate your time. And thanks for watching.